We've been experimenting with binaural recording for a charity project we're planning for next year and looking into the best ways to achieve a super realistic immersive audio experience. Now with a Neumann mm. KU80 dummy head coming in at around £7,000 in the UK and cheaper options such as the 3DO FS series not really cutting it for us, probably in no small part due to the lack of a physical head, in typical present day production style we thought we would try and make our own and the results have been pretty incredible. We're really pleased with some of the recordings we've captured and we've been truly able to mess with people's minds when we've invited them into the studio to have a listen on headphones. So stay tuned to the end of this video for some audio examples as well as a binaural music track I mixed specifically for this video. But what is binaural recording and how did it come about? Well, in a nutshell, it's a recording made using techniques that mimic the physicalities of the human auditory system as closely as possible and it only works when played back on headphones. So make sure you have a pair of headphones to hand to listen to the examples later in this video. But the actual techniques involved are actually a lot older than you might think. Here's James with a brief potted history. Although there were many quasi-binaural technological progressions throughout the 19th century, led by many great minds such as Clement Adair, in 1920s peacetime, a man who later came to be known as the father of stereophonic sound, Harvey Fletcher, bought a mannequin and mounted microphones to the side of its head, naming it Oscar. This was the world's first binaural dummy head. At the World's Fair in Chicago, Oscar made its debut in which fairgoers wore headphones whilst listening to someone walking around Oscar's head, and they were suitably mind blown at the sensation of hearing just what Oscar would be hearing. Around the same time, Cornelis de Burr and Roloff Vermeulen of Philips, a relatively small company at the time, outfitted their own mannequin with binaural microphones, but over the next three decades, stereo systems for both commercial and home use became more affordable and eventually became the new standard over mono audio. And so binaural audio was pushed to the sideline until the 1970s as recording artists and filmmakers concentrated on standard stereo. In 1970, binaural audio made its comeback as Neumann unveiled the KU80, the first commercially available head-based binaural recording system. Sony, JVC, AKG and Sennheiser soon followed suit, giving creators the equipment they needed to provide new ways of hearing media. In 1978, Lou Reed used German engineer Manfred Schunk's binaural dummy head to record Street Hassle the first commercial pop album recorded in binaural audio, while at the same time BBC Radio 4 started broadcasting binaural radio dramas, some without any spoken word but using solely binaurally recorded sounds to give immersion to the listener, putting them firmly in the seat of the protagonist of the story, with auditory storylines such as car chases giving plenty to listen to. Throughout the 90s, binaural audio became more mainstream and in 1996, Q Sound Labs released the most popular binaural recording ever produced, one you may have already heard, called Virtual Barbershop. In the recording, you're seated in a barbershop chair and, amongst various conversational pieces, the barber starts cutting your hair and it's an incredibly convincing recording. I've listened to this so many times over the last few years and I genuinely still struggle not to turn around and see who's behind me. We'll leave a link to this in the description so you can check it out for yourselves. It's definitely worth a listen. In recent years, Dolby Atmos has come into play and this uses a binaural algorithm to translate an Atmos mix to headphones. With companies such as Apple Music implementing it for their music library and most modern films being produced with Atmos in mind, a scalable system that can produce immersive surround sound over various numbers of speakers but that can also be mixed down to translate to headphones is still in its early stages but shows large potential to grow. But I've been experimenting with Dolby Atmos recently and the binaural mix down algorithm doesn't quite do it for me yet, much as the binaural panner found in most of the AWs can help achieve a greater sense of space, algorithmic binaural is to my ears, nowhere near as good as a genuine binaural recording. So what exactly do we need to make a genuine binaural recording? 
Well, as I said earlier, the key ingredient is a stereo pair of microphones that mimic the human auditory system as closely as possible. And that usually means using some kind of dummy head with accurate representations of the human ear with microphone capsules placed in them. Many people create binaural recordings using their own head with specifically designed microphones from companies such as Roland or at the higher end of the scale, DPA, worn as you would a pair of earbuds. Now these can yield impressive results. There's no better representation of a human head than a human head. But the Roland system inherently places the microphone capsules a little too far outside the ear. And whilst the DPA system is much better in this regard, the recording technique has limited use if you need to perform a stationary recording, you need to stay really still. You can also often hear excessive breathing and other bodily noises from whoever's wearing the microphone set. So in our case, as we need to make a quiet, stable binaural recording for theatrical presentation, we decided to go the traditional dummy head route, but without the big bucks price tag. Enter Mr. Blokey, a PVC mannequin head available on Amazon for a whopping £17.99. Now I chose this head because he seemed a nice pro audio colour, seemed like a nice bloke, offered a decent representation of an average head complete with a little bit of neck and was one of the few heads I looked at that also seemed to feature a fairly realistic pair of ears complete with pinner and a small ear canal perfect for mounting a small microphone in. He's also hollow so that makes fitting microphones in his ears a lot easier than it would be with a styrofoam head for example. So Mr Blokey turned up the next day and my first concern was how small the box was. On pulling him out I was a little disappointed to find that he was considerably smaller than I was expecting but when we got the tape measure out he actually proved to be not too far from the measurements of James's own head so we stuck with him. For microphones we decided to use traditional Lavalier mics for ease of mounting so Amazon to the rescue again with a matched pair of Comica omnidirectional microphones coming in at £57.95 for the pair. Links to these and the head are in the description below. Then it was out with the power tools to drill a couple of suitably sized holes in Mr. Blokey's ear canal, ready to poke the microphones through. Get them as flush as possible and then secure them from behind with a couple of blobs of blue tack. The results, well, not bad at all for 76 quid, 1% of the cost of a KU80. Pop on your headphones now and take a listen to this. Creepy BDSM vibe. Uh, Mark, no, it's ASMR, sorry. Creepy RSVP vibes. So that sounded pretty good, but I think we can give Mr. Blokey a bit of an upgrade. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the cheap Amazon microphones and put something decent in there. So these are EM272 capsules we've got a match pair of these available from mikebooster.com not sponsored not affiliated in any way but link is in the description and i'm actually wearing one of these now and these sound pretty good they're really good capsules for the money and a lot of asmr people use these capsules so we're going to upgrade his eardrums with these and the second thing we can do to improve performance, I think he's upgraded his ears because these are quite hard and quite plasticky. And I think the softer and more human the ears are, the better. So you can get various pairs of silicon ears on the internet. You can use medical ears that doctors practice on to remove things from people's ear canals, which look something like this. Now these ones I've actually ordered from binauralenthusiast.com. And the reason I've ordered these is because they're specifically made for binaural recording. They're roughly the same color as Mr. Blokey here. And the actual ear is mounted on a nice round section. So that means I should be able to get a hole saw into his head, cut out a hole that's 64 millimeters wide, the size of this, and then just slot this in from the inside. And these capsules fit perfectly in the little hole. So easy upgrade. So we're going to try that and then once we've done that we're going to fill his head with sand because I think the more mass the head has got the more human like it is the better. So let's drill into his head and see how that sounds. Blokey. Hello cat. You gonna help? Look, no he is. Right, 
Let's see if the ears fit. Yes. An ear. So it's a little bit proud there. So I reckon if we recycle the blue tack we used to hold the microphones in his original ears, we can get those pretty flush. Let's give it a go. Do you want to help us? Love it. Yeah, because the head's slightly contoured, it's actually impossible to get it all the way around. I think we might be better off having it stick out a little bit. Otherwise, it'll fall back through. Okay. Okay, so it's not quite perfection, but I think we're pretty much there. We've just got a little lip. Not sure that's going to make too much of a difference. Um, I think we actually need a slightly bigger head, if anything, because this is ideally the ears should be seven inches apart. These are six and a quarter, so they're a little bit closer together than ideal, but we could just pretend it's a child's head. But I think he looks pretty cool with his new ears in place. So now all we've got to do is get the microphones and pop those in and we should be there. That's so easy to do with these silicon ears. So there's our microphone. One in the other side and we're done. So pop your headphones on again and let's have a listen to how he sounds with the upgrades. <laughs> Spooky YMCA recording. Mark, how many times do I have to tell you it's ASMR? Spooky HSBC recording. Subscribe to present day production. We think that sounds pretty impressive. And with the extra investment of £117.60 for the microphones, £99 for the ears and £6.79 for the whole saw, we now have a total of £223.39 and that is still a lot cheaper and sounds far better than the off-the-shelf 3DO solution. But it's always nice to be able to put a DIY piece of gear to the test with some colleagues who haven't seen what you've been up to. So here's a recording we made in the room, just walking around, opening and closing the door, utilizing the rather squeaky floor we have outside this studio, and Jamie's reaction to it when he came in for a listen. Do you want a beverage? <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what 
helped really sell this to Jamie is that he's familiar with the room, the sound of us walking around, the door, the squeaky floor, and the directionality of a binaural recording is a psychoacoustic phenomenon and a very powerful one. So if you're familiar with the space that the recording is recorded in, then it becomes even more powerful and can be very convincing indeed. Even when I was editing the audio on headphones, I turned around every time the door went in the recording. I'm very used to the sound of that when I'm sitting in this room working, and the recording recording is entirely convincing. So convincing in fact that when we invited one of our neighbours in to have a listen and I asked him a question from the doorway on the recording, he instantly turned around to the door to answer me and was then quite shocked to find that I wasn't there, but I was actually standing over the other side of the room. And it's this effect that we're going to experiment with for the project that we're planning for next year. We really want to have a lot of fun messing with the audience and completely blur the boundaries of what is real and what isn't. And I'm entirely sold on our DIY dummy head. It's more than up to the task and I'm keen to hire in a KU80 for a few days to compare the two. Interestingly, the effect seems most pronounced when capturing sounds coming from behind the listener, not just with our head, but with any binaural recordings I've experienced. And I think that's probably a lot to do with how headphones work. On decent, well-placed studio monitors, you can get an entirely convincing phantom center stereo image. On our ATCs, I'm used to hearing centrally panned elements of a mix right there and sounding as strong as if I had a center speaker. But on headphones, that mid signal seems to emanate from somewhere inside your head rather than in front of it. And that's one of the reasons why mastering engineers tend to work on full range monitors rather than exclusively on headphones. It's a limitation of the inherent design of the headphone technology. But for recordings that involve those rear elements, then it's very convincing indeed. And the results we've had from our Mr. Blokey have inspired me to try and come up with some really creative ideas to spook the listener. But is this any good for music production? I let Mark loose on a track using our ATC SCM 200s as front speakers and the Kerr Acoustic K100s behind me for the rear, and the fact that he's never mixed anything in any kind of surround format before clearly shows. But he did get some great synth parts coming from behind, as well as a tasteful use of reverbs and various percussive elements. The results are certainly all encompassing and the binaural recording really gives a good representation of what it actually sounds like listening on four speakers in the room and it does translate to speakers very well too. Maybe he didn't do as bad a job as I made out. Pop your headphones on to hear the track and you'll see us in the next video. Fly with the stars sound free Party all day every weekend Make it boom boom to the beat Make it boom 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 Boom, 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 fly with the stars, I'm free, I'm free yeah. Party all day, every weekend Make it boom, boom, to the beat, to the beat yeah. Make it boom, 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 boom I'm glad to be a lie, lie, lie yeah. Cause I don't wanna waste my time, no I'm young and dumb and hopeless, right But I'm bound to turn out